Welcome to my channel, A Woman in Physics. Do you love beaches? And I'm not just talking about, you know, being on a beach in the sun, lying there, enjoying the warmth, but taking a nice walk on the beach, looking out onto the ocean, feeling the sand beneath your feet and, well, collecting shells. Because I really do love this and there is hardly any vacation, even a small one, on a beach from which I come home and I do not bring sand and some stones and some shells back home. Now, last time I did this, I got home and I usually start to prepare my stuff because I want to store it for, you know, the rest of my life. and. To that aim, I usually take the sand and the shells and I put them either into the microwave or really cook them up in order to get all the microorganisms out of it before I store it. Now, this last time, one of my shells got left over in the kitchen. I just overlooked it and uh, I started to prepare something to eat and I used vinegar for that. And a droplet of this vinegar got onto the shell. So I put the shell on the side and completely forgot about it. But apparently it was, you know, a bit of a bigger droplet. And when I realized the shell was still there and I realized that this spot where the vinegar got onto the shell looked different. And for a moment it got me thinking, what happens if I put a whole shell into a glass of vinegar. Have you ever done that? No? Then let's do it together. So what do we need? First of all, a clean glass. Secondly, of course we need the vinegar. Or in my case, I took a special one with 25% acetic acid. And finally, we need a shell that fits into the glass. Then we fill the glass with the vinegar and put the shell inside. Immediately we can see that tiny bubbles start to form on the surface of the shell that make their way up through the vinegar into the air. And even on the inside of the shell where the vinegar gets inside, these bubbles form and leave the shell as larger accumulated bubbles. The question is, how does this happen? Well, the shells of mollusks and snails grow by a process called biomineralization, during which living organisms, the animals, form composite mineral organic tissue. In most cases, these biogenic structures perform a multiplicity of tasks, ranging from providing the animals with strength and structural support to magnetic and optical functionalities. These capabilities stem from complex three-dimensional hierarchical arrangements of the tissue optimized throughout billions of years of evolution. In general, mollusk and snail shells consist mainly of whitish lime. This is also known in technical language as calcium carbonate, CaCO3. In normal water, this material is very stable and insoluble. However, any acid, as for example the acetic acid in wine vinegar, which is CH3COOH, can dissolve lime. Now, the acetic acid reacts with the calcium carbonate to form calcium acetate and in addition it forms carbonic acid. The latter is H2CO3. And the result? Well, the calcium acetate can now be dissolved in water. And in contrast, the carbonic acid, the second product, decomposes like carbonated water into carbon dioxide, CO2, and water, H2O. And we can see here that already after two hours, in some places, holes appear in the shell. And while we watch what happens for the rest of the day, 
let's have a short closer look on the formation of such shells. The protective outer shells of mollusks consist in particular of a variety of composite ultrastructures that are arranged in layers that lay parallel to the outer surface of the shell. Each of these ultrastructures has a well-defined morphology. It is made of building blocks with a distinctive shape and consists, as I mentioned, of calcium carbonate, held together by an intercrystalline organic matrix. The growth of the shell proceeds in particular in a so-called extracellular cavity, in a framework of proteins and polysaccharides that are secreted by the epicellular cells of the mantle prior to mineral deposition. The cells are not directly involved in the process of mineral deposition, but they choreograph it indirectly by producing the necessary chemical and physical environment in which a specific ultrastructure is self-assembled. In particular, the deposition of shell material proceeds on a purely organic layer, termed periostracum, that covers the outer surface of the baby animal. Of course, this surface will stay with the animal, but if you consider a growing shell from birth to its death, then at first this organic layer protects the animal at first. In contrast, the mantle that I mentioned is on the inside of the shell connected to the animal. Hence, it is producing all the stuff that I mentioned. And as a result, shells grow in general in sickness from the outside to the inside, layer by layer. Coming back to our particular shell, we can see that it is really dissolving over time. Of course, the speed with which this happens depends on one hand on the vinegar. Mine is rather strong. From uh, German it can be translated as vinegar essence. And on the other hand, it also depends on the shell itself, in particular on its thickness. So if you want to recreate this experiment, it may run fast or take longer depending on the combination of vinegar and shell. Anyway, please let me add two things. First of all, I hope nobody gets the stupid idea to take a living animal for that experiment. And secondly, please don't take a protected shell. There are different laws in different countries all over the world as to what shells you may or may not collect at a beach. So please follow these laws. With that being said, in the end, after a day, we get a murky liquid that contains lots of calcium and some organic matter that is left from the shell, so please don't drink it. Whereas the carbon dioxide that has been produced has gone fully into the atmosphere. Hence, all the shells in the world can be understood, dead or alive, to bind large amounts of carbon dioxide. And with this neat little experiment I will leave you for today. I wish you a good day, a good night, wherever, whenever you are watching this and I hope to see you soon. Bye!